मेरा काम है इतिहास की परत को खोलना इतिहास का मतलब समझते I am Pratiksha Mishra and you're listening to Do I Like It, a Quinn production where we review everything and anything under the sun. And today I'm going to tell you, Do I Like Ram Sethu? In life, things happen, and even if nothing's happening, that's still something happening, right? So on this show, we talk about things that happen. We get an esteemed panel of highly jobless people to answer the million-dollar question: Do I like it? Let me give you a context first. Written and directed by Abhishek Sharma, and it stars Akshay Kumar in the lead as an archaeologist whose name is Dr. Aryan. After some immaterial things that happen in the beginning, Aryan is tasked with proving whether the Ram Setu is a man-made structure or if it's, you know, a natural structure, like sedimentation and whatnot. Why is this important? This is important because apparently the government, mixed with like an industrialist, I think, wants to break down the Ram Setu to form a travel canal of sorts, and a lot of people are protesting it because they connect Lord Lord Ram to the Ram Setu. So proving perhaps that it's a natural structure or that it predates Ram's birth year would help them convince the Supreme Court to let them build it. That's basically the whole scenario right now. Why Akshay Kumar or rather Dr. Aryan is perfect for this is because he is an atheist, so he's neutral in all of this. Uh, the fact that he's an atheist really troubles his wife, Professor Gayatri, played by Nishad Bharucha, but we'll get into that later. Before I get into whether I like Ram Sethu or not, please remember that you can watch other episodes of this podcast and other podcasts by The Quint on our website, thequint.com, or wherever you get your podcast fix. From the very beginning, Aryan has this whole thing where he's like, "Oh, I'm an archaeologist. I will listen to science and facts and evidence and all of this." But he's a liar. He's a liar. He turns around so fast on that logic that the film actually goes through a tonal shift in the second half. So when he and his team actually in the beginning show up in Afghanistan, where an archaeological expedition has been going on for a while, in ke pahunchte hi they make two huge discoveries. One literally because unke pero ke niche se zameen khisak jati hai and they fall into a discovery. Did no one walk there before them, or was the sand waiting for our hero to arrive so it would fall and you know they'd make their huge discovery that would give them international fame? It is as if film or puri kainat jud gayi hai. आर्यन को अपने मकसद के पास ले जाने के लिए इंक्लूडिंग द रेस्ट ऑफ द कास्ट आर्यन रोल इन इट सेल्फ इज प्रीडी मीटी इज अ लॉट गोइंग ऑन अक्षय कुमार प्लेज इट प्रीडी वेल ऑल्सो वेरी कन्विंसिंग समटाइम्स इट फील्स लाइक यूर वॉचिंग अक्षय कुमार ऑन स्क्रीन इंस्टेड ऑफ आर्यन विच इज हाउ इट शुड बी बट वी कैन पुट दैट असाइड नन ऑफ द अदर कैरेक्टर्स सीम टू हैव एनी थिंग टू डू द वुमेन ऐसा लगता है कि उनको ऐसे रोल्स दिए हैं विच आर इम्पॉर्टेंट एंड यू नो दे नो थिंग्स एंड देव थिंग्स टू डू इट्स नॉट ट्रू There is literally a scene where a man mansplains something about rocks to the person, to the woman uh, who plays a doctor who is a carbon dating expert. It is her job to tell them that when they bring back like sediments and rocks, how old they are, etc., etc., whatever. She is confused between a pumice stone and the stone that they found, and a man explains to her why that can't be true. To its credit, before it becomes a WhatsApp forward, the film is actually pretty interesting. VFX aside, we'll again get to that later. The film is very interesting in the first half. जो उन्होंने premise build किया है is very interesting. Uh, the as a the film also has commentary about like religious fanaticism and the whole debate surrounding science versus faith, you know, or mythology. Everything is going on pretty well. And then after the interval, like I said, a tone shift to just WhatsApp University. The man, Doctor Aryan, who spent the entire film talking about facts and evidence and like logic and everything, is now suddenly giving emotional arguments in court, while the lawyer working for the other side is asking some very important questions. And the man, who is an archaeologist believing in science, is just giving her no nothing that sounds like evidence. And once he is stepping out of the court, there is a mob standing, chanting "Jai Shri Ram" with saffron flags everywhere. So at least the film is not hiding anything. But how the film got from commentary on religious fanaticism and like an actual adventure story to this, I will never understand. In the end, in the very like close to the end, as a film, as a screen, ke niche in barely like if you are looking at the screen, which by the way, it's a very intense scene. So if you are looking at the screen, you'll miss the disclaimer. 
दे टेल यू दैट द फिल्म इज फिक्शनलाइज अफकोर्स फिल्म के स्टार्टिंग के डिस्क्लेमर में भी दैट इज देयर की द फिल्म इज एक्चुअली बेस्ड ऑन द बुक डेटिंग द एरा ऑफ लॉर्ड ड्रामा बाय पुष्कर भटनागर बट हाउ मेनी पीपल सिट एंड रीड द एंटायर डिस्क्लेमर Also I am genuinely confused as to why Jacqueline Fernandez an actor who is from Sri Lanka and is on an expedition to Sri Lanka with the main character is a character from Goa why doesn't she just play a character from Sri Lanka it would add a lot to the story but then she would have insights and nobody other than Arin is allowed to have insights all of this aside let's talk about the film from say a technical perspective do i like Ram Sethu as a film or as as a text if you will if you watch the trailer for ram setu i'm sure you heard the dialogue itihas ka matlab samajhte ho it thus happened yeah that pretty much sets the base for how the dialogues in the film go everyone on the screen is telling you what is happening on the screen so you're watching it happen and then they state the obvious you know how in cid sometimes everyone is standing in a murder scene and the abg the nacp pradyuman is everyone is just giving you information that you can clearly see like oh darwaza aate hue band tha ya oh khidki ka kaach toota hua hai uh, body ke paas phone hai to shayad wo marne se pehle phone pe the it is literally just that the dialogues and ram setu that's exactly how they go this team that conveniently finds everything wherever they go is sometimes just oblivious aise unke samne hai evidence right what to do is right in front of them but it's like a dora episode where it's like oh can you see where the mountain is girl is behind you it's behind you and that's how the film ka script and screenplay is just so shoddy it doesn't i wouldn't say it doesn't make sense but it's just the narrative is not strong enough to hold the audience and okay it's based on a book by somebody but the base of it still comes from the ramayan right how do you take epics like ramayana and mahabharata which have so much lore and there's so many possibilities to tell stories there's so much potential and do nothing with it do i like the vfx of ram setu no i do not is it the worst not really not really the worst you know adi purush is right there <laughs> i'm sorry i'm sorry i i am sure vfx artists have worked very hard on it so i don't ever believe that a vfx being bad is on the vfx artists that i feel like is a disclaimer that i should give out but in ram setu the vfx feels amateur ish you know in execution or in ideation i'm not sure for example the suit is so pillsbury doughboy it's so b max from like big hero 6 and sometimes the fishes seem weird uh the, there's a vfx crocodile or did that or maybe that's just a crocodile that looks vfxy but it's all that the water sometimes is just not believable as water so it's just n- a lot of things that aren't working trying to hold together a film to make it work so clearly it won't the one good thing that works for the film is satyadev as ap who is frankly hilarious like most of the comic relief comes from him and also his interactions with jacqueline fernandez those are very funny and also his boat is named chiranjeevi for some reason and it's it's a lot it's a lot the suit by the way mr baymax has also been named makar so a lot of that is going on if you want to look for like i don't know uh easter eggs for your favorite epics like ramayana or mahabharata you will find a lot of them but not much else in the second half or maybe in the film in general there are a lot of loopholes also like how did Aryan carry a rock up to the surface when he abandoned his suit or um how d- why would you take a submarine to like very low levels in the ocean without checking that you have safety there is not a lot of logic here so even if you're an akshay kumar fan or are attracted to the premise the film is not going to give you a lot to be honest so to answer the age old question do i like ram setu the first half was bearable but the second made things much worse Thank you so much for joining us again. See you next time. Do I like it? Is a Quint original podcast hosted by Pratiksha, executive produced by Shelly Wali and Ritu Kapoor, produced and edited by Anjali Palod, written by me, Pratiksha again, with theme music from BMG Production. Thank you for listening. listening to the quinn's podcast